Cinder Boy. Cinder Boy was crazy about football. His wicked stepdad and his two lazy stepbrothers were football crazy too. The whole family supported Royal Palace United. Every Saturday, they would lie about on the sofa with the remote control and watch their favorite team on TV. Royal Palace always played brilliantly in their smart pink shorts and shirts. But not poor Cinder Boy. He wasn't even allowed to watch. He had to wait on his stepbrother's hand and foot. And bring them cups of tea and ball after ball of peanuts, which were their favorite snack. Cinder Boy's family was very noisy and bad mannered. When Royal Palace scored, they would jump up and down on the sofa and shout for more peanuts to celebrate. And when the other team scored, they would throw their peanuts at the TV. Then yell at Cinder Boy to pick them up so that they would throw them again. One day, his cruel stepfather said to Cinder Boy, "Listen, Cinders, tomorrow is the day of the big cup final. I am taking your stepbrothers to the Royal Palace Stadium to watch the match. And while we were gone, you must clean the whole house from top to bottom." Yes. Said his stepbrothers, "We won every last peanut picked up from under the sofa." Poor Cinder Boy was very unhappy. He would have loved to see his team play in the cup final more than anything else in the world. The next morning, he had to wake up earlier than ever to prepare peanut butter sandwiches for his horrible brothers, who only laughed at the tears in Cinder's eyes. As they drove away, shouting and tooting the horn, Cinder Boy lay on the sofa and cried and cried and cried. Then he had an idea. He would work as hard as anything to clean the house so that he could watch the B Cup final on TV. He set to work straight away, scrubbing his stepbrother's smelly football socks. And hoovering up every last peanut from under the sofa. When at last the work was done, the house sparkled from top to bottom. Cinder Boy pulled up his little stool, found the remote control, and switched on the TV. The match had just begun. The terraces were packed with cheering Royal Palace fans. Cinder Boy even caught a glimpse of his stepfather and brothers sitting in the front row, waving their pink scarves and throwing peanuts at the referee. Oh, how Cinder Boy wished he could go to a real live football match! What made him feel even sadder was that Royal Palace were not playing well that day. Soon the other side had scored, and Cinder Boy felt sadder than ever. To make matters worse, just before half time, a terrible thing happened. The Royal Palace captain was kicked in the shin and had to be carried off the field on a stretcher. When the half time whistle blew, Royal Palace were tanned, kneeled down, and struggling without their best player. During the advertisements, Cinder Boy was crying so hard he could hardly see the television. Suddenly, a pink face appeared on the TV screen before him. "Don't cry, Cindy," it said. Cinder Boy rubbed his eyes. "There must be something wrong with the television," he thought. The face seemed to be talking to him. "Who?" Who who are you? He stuttered. I am your TV godmother," said the face on the television. And guess what, Cindy? You shall go to the B Cup final. But I don't have anything to wear," stammered Cinder Boy. "Don't worry, Cinder Boy," 
Just press button thirteen on the remote control," said the TV godmother. Cinder boy wiped his eyes with the back of his hand and held out the remote control. He pressed button thirteen. Kerbam! As if by magic, the scruffy old clothes he was wearing disappeared, and Cinder boy stood tall and handsome, dressed in a pink silk shirt. And pink silk shorts. On his feet were a pair of brand new football boots with gleaming glass studs. Oh, thank you, TV Godmother. But how will I get to the big cup final? Oh, you're a big warrior," said the voice from the TV. Press button fourteen on the remote control. Cinder Boy pressed button fourteen. Kerbam! As if by magic, the old sofa changed into a long, shiny pink limousine with a pink uniformed chauffeur at the wheel. Oh, thank you, thank you! cried Cinder Boy. Just one thing, Cindy Doll said. The face on TV. No one must recognize you. Wear this mask at all times. A hand reached out of the screen, holding a pink silk mask. And most important of all, you must return home before the referee blows the final whistle. Without a second thought, Cinder Boy grabbed the mask and jumped into the limousine and roared out through the door. It seemed like only seconds before he screeched to a hat in the stadium car park. Cinder Boy pulled on the pink mask and ran towards a big open door. When he looked around, he was standing, right in the middle of the pitch. The crowd cheered in excitement as the mysterious pink masked player charged onto the field and headed straight for the ball. He skillfully tackled the other players. Flicking the ball into the air with his left foot and sprinting towards the goalpost, then, to the amazement of the Royal Palace fans, Kerbam, he shot it into the back of the net. The crowd went wild. Only ten more minutes to go. Cinder Boy maneuvered the ball around the pitch as gracefully as a dancer at a fairy tale ball. Then, kerboom! Cinder Boy scored again, and kerblam! He headed the ball into the back of the net. Kerwumph! He bounced it into the goal with the tip of his glass-studded boot. The stadium roared with applause. On a bench at the side of the field. The injured Royal Palace captain and Eddie Prince, the team manager, stared in disbelief. Whoever that player is, they said, we need him for our team. Before long, the score was equal, ten all. But soon there were only seconds left to play, and the ball was at the wrong end of the field. Cinder Boy noticed the referee put the whistle to his lips. "TV Godmother, help me!" he whispered. One last time, Cinder Boy dived towards the ball. With a mighty swing, he kicked it so hard that one of his glass-studded boots flew off and then tumbled to the ground. The goal shot upwards like a rocket. The whole crowd rose to their feet. The rival team stood open-mouthed as the ball soared like a bird through the sky. At the other end of the field, it began to fall. It bounced once, then dropped effortlessly into the center of the net. Royal Palace had won the cup final. The crowd went ballistic. A thousand pink caps were thrown into the air. Eddie Prince raced onto the pitch to sign up the mystery player. But Cinder Boy, remembering the promise to his TV godmother, 
ran out of the stadium as fast as his one boot would carry him. But to his dismay, when he reached the car park, he found only the battered old sofa where the pink limousine had been, and poor old Cinder Boy had to push the sofa home. You should have seen him! Shouted the stepbrothers when they finally returned home from the celebrations. Yeah, they smirked, and poor old Cinder Boy missed the whole thing. Cinder Boy only smiled to himself. That night, as he lay in his broken old bed, tears of joy sparkled in his eyes as he dreamed about the day he had scored the winning goal for Royal Palace United, the best team in the whole wide world. Early the next morning, there was a knock at the door. Cinder Boy ran to answer it. He couldn't believe his eyes. There stood Eddie Prince, the Royal Palace manager. I'm searching for the mysterious boy in the pink mask, he said. The person who fits this gleaming glass studded boot will play for the Royal Palace team for the rest of their days. Ooh, said the lazy stepbrothers, coming downstairs in their pajamas. Let me try, let me try. It's no good asking Cinder Boy. He didn't even watch the match. Go and fetch some penis for Mr. Prince Cinders. The first greedy stepbrother snatched the glass studded boot from Eddie Prince. He tore off his slipper and shoved his sweaty foot into the boot. But no matter how hard he pushed, he couldn't get the boot on. Then the second greedy stepbrother stepped forward and grabbed the boot. His foot was slightly smaller and slightly sweater. He shoved and squeezed and pushed and heaved and suddenly, plop, his foot was inside. It fits! It fits! he shouted. Father! Father! Come and look! I'm going to play for Royal Palace. I'm going to be on telly. I'm going to be rich. I'm going to buy a peanut factory. Everyone's going to cheer just like they did for the boy in the pink mask. I mean, me, of course. Oh, said Eddie Prince, looking a little surprised. Are you sure it was you? I'm afraid you'll have to do a little training. Suddenly, Cinder Boy stepped out of the kitchen. On his face, he wore a pink silk mask. In his hand was a tiny pair of pink shorts. Well then, stepbrother, he said, let's see you fit into these. And he held out the pink shorts. Everyone gasped, but try as he might, his stepbrother had eaten too many peanuts to squeeze into the shorts. So Cinder Boy drove away with Eddie Prince to begin a new life as Royal Palace's star player. But being a kind sort of boy, he soon forgave his wicked stepfather and his greedy brothers and arranged for them to have as many free tickets as they wanted to see Royal Palace play. He even offered to pay for the operation to have the glass studded boot removed from his stepbrother's foot. And Cinder Boy lived happily ever after and scored more goals for Royal Palace than there are penis on their old sofas in the whole wide world. <laughs>